Good evening and welcome to Vanguard Conversations with Women of Color in STEM, or Vanguard STEM for short. We are so excited to have y'all for our September episode. And if you are of schooling age of any sort, you are in school now, so welcome. <laughs> we figured that since you were in school, one of the things that you should know about no matter what level you are, are conferences. So that is the reason and justification behind our show for tonight, which is called, It's About Who You Know, Conferences 101. So I'm your host, Dr. Jedida Eisler. I am, let's see, who am I today? Today, I'm a National Science Foundation Astronomy and Astrophysics Postdoctoral Fellow at Vanderbilt University and a proud co-guest with our wonderful and esteemed panelists who I can't wait to introduce you to. They are seriously the business, y'all. Like, you don't understand. We're talking to, like, leadership on this call. So like all the truth, all the wisdom, it's going to be amazing. Uh, so I can't wait to introduce you to them. Uh, but I did want to uh, make sure you knew what we were talking about this month, make sure that you know that you're welcome to be a part of the conversation, um, and let you know why we're talking about this subject, right? So if you're like me, you like going to conferences and don't need to be convinced to go, but some people don't know about them. And we want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to know about conferences, to know why conferences are important, and to go to them because it is about to be conference season. Uh, so you going to conferences is important, and, we, and often you'll know about conferences in your profession in your field. And we want you to know about conferences that are not just in your in your discipline that, that are scientific, but also are that care about and are concerned as you as an, as an individual and your identity. So we're trying to connect the STEM society with um, love for and appreciation for identity. So that's the thing that makes uh, the organizations that we're gonna highlight tonight special and the ones that we'll talk about going forward through the month. So that means that you should meet people who are leading them and who better than two highly educated Awesome, amazing. You'll, you'll agree with me by the end of the show if you don't know already. Um, women of color to tell us about two professional societies, women of color and STEM. And they are for students of color and STEM broadly. Uh, but of course, this is Vanguard STEM. We are focused and highlighting on women of color. So we'll be asking them about um, that in particular. So the two, um, so it's an information packed show. We're going to have actual like links to throw at you and tips for how you should apply for things and scholarship material and all of the things. So if you don't have have your note taking apparatus, which people used to say paper and pen, but you know, people may not use paper and pen anymore. It's a new age. So get your note taking apparatus of whatever sort, because we have lots and lots of information for you. Um, but before we get to our panelists, let me just get some housekeeping out the way. Number one is the fact that this is a live show. That means anything can happen. We hope only good things happen because that's what we plan for. Um, beyond that, it means that we want to hear from you directly. We'd like to hear from you on social media. You can ask your questions on Twitter is where most of our team is. Um, you can use the hashtag Vanguard STEM, or you can use ha the hashtag VS Conferences 101, which is our special show link for today. It's not a link. Our special show hashtag for today. So use those two to ask your questions, to give feedback, to uh, give a comment. If someone says something that you think is amazing, retweet that thing. Like put it out there for more people to get a hold of. That's also where you'll find a link to the show. The other place that you can participate in our in our hangout is in the actual Google Hangout box. So then you can put your questions in either here or here. I've never watched it live because. Yeah, you get it. Anyway, so you can put them in the Google Hangout window, and that will allow you to um, get those questions right up. And as they come, I'll announce them so that our panelists can hear them. So those are the two main ways that you can respond back to us, and we're waiting for you. Uh, so please do do that. Uh, so without further ado, let me introduce our esteemed panelists. I really, I'm so excited. Like, I can't even right now. Uh, so my our first panelist is the president of Nobache, which stands for the National Organization for the Professional Advancement of Black Chemists and Chemical Engineers, Ms. Talitha Hampton, a chemical engineer, uh, and is pursuing her PhD in engineering and innovation management at George Washington University. Uh, Talitha is also the project manager at AstraZeneca Pharmaceuticals, where she manages critical planning, business communications, project execution, and strategy coordination for the AstraZeneca Network Strategy and Operations Group. Talitha is also the youngest president of Novache in the organization's 42-year history. So welcome, Talitha. 
over awesome achiever. Thank you for being here. Happy to be here. Thank you. And the other esteemed panelist we have on the show is the executive, executive director of SOCNIS, which stands for the Society for Advancement of Chicanos, Hispanics, and Native Americans in Science, Dr. Antonia Franco. Dr. Franco earned her doctorate in educational administration and supervision from the Mary Lou Fulton Teachers College at Arizona State University, where I hear it's much harder than California, where you reside. <laughs> and her career has spanned nearly two decades in higher education and philanthropy, working on issues of educational access, equity, and college completion, completion in underrepresented communities. We really appreciate that work. Um, she also has extensive experience developing educational and community-based partnerships. Thank you for being on the show, Antonia. Thrilled to be here. Thank you. So excited. Oh my goodness. You, you guys are the, you, you are the best. Y'all are the best. There it is. Um, so we wanted to first ask you, sort of starting out out the gate, about your organization. So can you tell us a little bit, and we'll start with you, Teresa. Can you tell us a little bit about Nobache? Um, you, you mentioned that it was, you know, has a 42-year history, when it was started, um, and what one should know about that organization. Thanks. So, uh, Nobache was started in 1973 uh, by a, a small ad hoc uh, committee. Uh, started um, at Drexel University, and um, with our history, uh, it was started because people we wanted a place where we could come together. Um, you had a lot of large societies. You had the American Chemical Society, and you had others, and we didn't really have a voice for chemists and chemical engineers at the time, and we wanted a place where we could come together. Uh, the chemist and chemical engineering community is already small, um, but uh, we wanted a family atmosphere, a place where we could really encourage each other, grow each other, and really advance the pipeline. And um, it was started with seven gentlemen, and um, uh, most of them are still with us, and a few of them still come to the conference <laughs> regularly. And, you know, we'll get to that in a minute. But um, uh, seven, seven of our founders got together, and they said, you know, we're going to pull this ad hoc committee together. And a year later, um, we uh, started the organization. So um, we're just about as old as some of the other organizations that we'll probably allude to, like Nesby. Um, but um, there, it was just a very um, forward-looking uh, type organization where we wanted to build the pipeline and advance young people and make sure that, you know, for those of us who have arrived, um, you know, we were able to reach back um, through mentoring and those of us who are trying to get there, we are able to reach up. Awesome. Now, Tonya, could you tell us a little bit about SACNIS, how it formed and what its major mission is? Sure, and uh, you see me nodding because uh, there are so many similarities of a lot of the organizations that I shared with you, Talitha. Um, so SACNAS also started in 1973, um, as a matter of fact, by a group of Chicano and Native American scientists who became our founders, but essentially they really looked at their own institutions and didn't see the diversity that they felt was really important to have. Therefore, they thought it was really important to create a, an, an organization that would actually address that, right? The lack of diversity in higher education. And so, you know, I'm really proud to say that after all these years, um, you know, they're still involved as well, similar to your organization, Talitha. Uh, they're still involved, um, and I think it's fantastic to see that their vision has, has not only come to fruition, but we're really trying to evolve the organization. Um, and what's really exciting for us is that um, while we have a, a focus on Chicano, Hispanic, and Native Americans um, in, our, in our STEM community, we are multicultural. We serve all students of different backgrounds uh, that come to our conference, and we're multidisciplinary as well. We cover all disciplines. And the, the most important thing is that they know that they have they can integrate science, culture, and community when they come to our conference. And I think that's really critical and important for people to know that when you come in, you feel a sense of home. And there's a level of support that we want to give our students to be successful. Absolutely, that is fantastic. And you know, 
as we said, there are some, some sister organizations that we're going to get to later in the show. Um, but one of the things that you both mentioned that I think is worth noting is number one, a sense of home and community. And number two, identifying a need, right, in the scientific space that it's, it's fantastic to have professional societies that focus in on whatever discipline, right? That, that is absolutely critical. We understand that's important. Um, but both I guess it sounds like both sets of founders of both organizations were also like, yes, you know, we are these things, like we study these fields, but it's also important that our community and people who look like us or, or relate to us or identify with us also feel a sense of, of feeling at home. Uh, so that's, those are really important points. And I think, at, at least for me, the fact that that is born into the, the, the development of these organizations, it's what makes them so special. Yeah, I, I, I think I think you know one of the things I'd want to want to ask about is um, and and, I, and maybe Talitha, I'll ask you this first because you mentioned how I like the the language of you know those who are have arrived reach back those that are coming reach forward right that's a great notion and I think um, Antonio you probably had that same idea with you know home right like it's a place that you can go that you're free to ask questions really of any sort um, did either of you want to talk about actively built into the conference experience that help maybe a new student or a new Vanguard STEM viewer that attends feel at home? I'd be happy to. Um, I think, you know, for us, for at Sockness, you know, a new, a new young person coming into the conference, we encourage them to network. Uh, there's a lot of great opportunity to not only meet with upperclassmen, uh, but also uh, professionals and faculty members and people from, in, you know, staff members from industry. So all of the STEM workforce. Um, but we also encourage mentoring that they interact with individuals and ask those questions that they'd love to learn more about. Uh, we also have students who are unsure. They love science. They just don't know what direction to go in. This is a really wonderful opportunity to explore a lot of different uh, conversations about the various disciplines to see where they might be interested in. Um, it's also like a visual, it's a beautiful visual representation of students giving their own presentations. A thousand students give presentations annually to our conference and it's such a motivator for young people to think, you know what, I can present as well and I wanna get ready for that. How do I do that? So we really look at our conference as an intervention, a programmatic intervention where we give a lot of tools and resources and opportunities for networking for students to be able to take their work to the next level, whether, whether it's to build their research or to think about graduate school and where they wanna go. That's really important for us. Absolutely. Um, I echo some of the same points from Antonia. And um, I, I would add that, you know, our communities are, are kind of inherently small and um, really smaller relative to the majority population. And um, if you grow up in the organization or if you start, you know, if you're a young student, um, grad student, you, you start coming back and you see the same people from different cohorts and after a while you know that, okay, they were with my class of Nova Shea, you know, and after a while um, you, you, you look you have the elders, you have your younger siblings, you, you have, you know, your aunties and uncles. It's, it's a very close environment. And in that environment, you can ask the questions, you can feel free. You can also have a space where people can, where you can grow. If there's opportunity for growth and there's, there's an opportunity to present and somebody will pull you aside and say, sweetheart, <laughs> you, know, you know, when you present, do this, wear this. <laughs> Don't wear this. Um, lower that. You button that. You know there are there. Are, I've been pulled aside many times to you know get feedback and to grow and to have you know leadership experiences in a context for which I wouldn't have been given in a larger organization. And so you know when everyone comes together, um, it, it really does feel like home because sometimes as a minority, you can especially once you start hitting grad school. You find out that you're the only one, or it feels that way. I'll say it that way. Um, oftentimes, you're one, the, the one female, the one person of color, or one of two, one of five, and you know it's 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 really small. And sometimes you can feel like you just need a pick me. You need to go home. 
you know, kind of come back to your family, come back to your center. Um, as a grad student, when I started coming to Nova Shea, I was just so amazed at how many people of color <laughs> were pursuing degrees in chemistry and chemical engineering and, and even other STEM fields. I could not believe it. I'd never seen it. And I went to an HBCU, and I didn't even have any any people of color who were my professors, <laughs> because in my in my particular field, it's just not what we had. Um, so it's just it was very mind blowing to see all that and to feel at least to have a visual representation of of a sense of community, um, and then to have that buoyed with the actual sense of community. Absolutely. It's when I was talking, you know, on the on our VanguardSim.com website about this this show and why I was so excited excited about it. Part of it was that exact feeling. I literally wrote about how I remember grad at Norfolk State University, which was an H which is an HBCU, showing up for the national, my first National Society of Black Physicists student. And I remember when we went to take the group picture, which I think is critical to any, any conference, when we went to take that group picture and it was like, they came, like, we just came from all different directions. People were just like walking towards the camera. And I was like, I have never seen this many black people, mostly black people, it wasn't all, because like, as you say, Antonia, you know, these the organizations are welcome to everyone, but like this many people of color, predominantly black physicists, walking over and taking a picture. And I just remember standing there like super proud, like, wait, I'm part of this. Like this is my this is my crew. Uh, how how empowered I felt going forward, right? That there was a space for that and whether the conference itself is small, um, like you were talking about with Nobuche, right, it's relatively small, or if it's a slightly larger event like Sockness or an even much bigger event like Grace Hopper, right? Like I think having the space to see yourself represented um, in a, you know, a wide variety of human beings who identify broadly with you, I think it's, it's powerful and it does help you succeed. Another point that both of you made um, that I wanted to come back to was the training that you get at these conferences, right? Like conferences aren't just for established scientists to come and talk about how awesome they are, right? Like they're for students to cut their teeth, to get practice presenting, to get practice going to conferences, um, as you say, um, how, how to engage professionally in conferences in whatever way that may be. Um, all of those things are really important. And so maybe that's a good question to ask you both about um, maybe how many students, like what fraction of students present at your conferences? Um, is there a, me a special mechanism that they can use to get prepared or to get help? Or like how, how does a student that's interested in presenting go about presenting at your conference? So, at, with Novache, um, we absolutely encourage students to present and to submit. Um, so when you are submitting an abstract, um, student, we ask students to self-select whether they want to do a poster or whether they want to do a, um, a um, podium talk. And um, those abstracts are reviewed and uh, for, for selection. What we try to do is make sure that there is um, one or two, or there are one or two, um, undergraduates in each session to make sure that they are also getting that experience. Um, but almost every student who comes to Nova Shea who's funded has to give some sort of presentation, whether it's a poster or whether it's a podium or whether we call them out to volunteer and say, hey, you know, you need to spend time speaking with so-and-so. Everyone has a role to play. Um, and I think that's, that's very important because it gets you comfortable. And um, you know when I was you know presenting at, at you know at Novache, it gave me the, the courage and the experience to take that back and um, you know really hone my skills. So people would think, oh my goodness, you have such you know good presentation skills. Where did you get this so young? And you get that from being groomed um, and being forced <laughs> to you know to kind of do these presentations. So. Every student who's funded to come to the conference has to do some sort of presentation. And those who aren't funded, we absolutely encourage them to submit, um, to submit abstracts and to do a presentation. Yeah, so for SOCNAS, what I would say is that very similar to what Talitha shared is that, um, you know, students have to submit um, uh, apply to submit their abstract to present 
Um, we have more students than we can always support, but we encourage students to go through the process. We have a set of reviewers that identify who will those students be for each year at the conference. Um, so the really great thing is that for undergraduate students, they can do research, they can present their research. Um, for graduate students, we have what we call grad orals, where they present their work as well. Um, so that's that venue for graduate students. And uh, we also have some postdoc students that are able to present their work. Um, and that's a growing community for us. We have professional development sessions that we have uh, certain tracks for students, both graduate and undergraduate students, um, and then professionals. But the idea is that we want them to be able to continue to advance their education. So we have a lot, a number of sessions that talk about how to get into graduate school, how to apply for research, um, how to apply for a grant. And then, um, and then we also have a, a, a track for leadership. It's really important that our students start thinking about those opportunities and what that means within their realm as well. Uh, so those are the number of opportunities that we provide. And the last uh, opportunity that I want to share, it's really important. It's like our signature event. It's called Conversation with Scientists. It's been around for a really long time. It's where there's no interruption in terms of that time frame for the conference. Everyone comes to the discipline that they're interested in a different room, and they um, partner up with uh, faculty members or professionals in that particular discipline, and they have small group discussions about their disciplines and anything they want to know about the subject. So that's another form of professional development for our young people to feel really comfortable um, in those small settings when maybe in a large group setting they're not as comfortable doing. So we've tried a lot of options for students. That's fantastic. And, you know, as an organization, a new organization that has conversations in our name, we are all about the conversations with scientists. It's a fantastic point. And thank you both for identifying areas where students can plug in. I guess we jumped the gun just a little bit because we didn't say. And so could you both please just tell us when your conference is, what dates there are and what dates they are and if there is any funding available still to attend? Because, I mean, we're talking about them going to present. They should know when and where they're going. Absolutely. I'll go ahead and jump in, Talifa. Um, our conference is October the 13th through the 15th in uh, Long Beach, California this year. We are pretty much towards the end of that. Uh, we've already selected our students uh, for both travel scholarships and for our student presentations. However, what I would say is that there's, um, it's always good to plan early and start preparing for next year. Uh, we will be in Salt Lake City next year. Um, we have a number of scholarships that students can apply for in various disciplines. Uh, so it's never too early to just start exploring that on our website, and I'm sure you'll give us the, give them the link. But at 2016 SACNAS, and additional uh, links to information about how to raise money, how to apply for scholarships, and we also did our first Google Hangout um, past year. So that's available for students to look at as well. Students talking to students. So our conference is uh, November 8th through 11th um, in Raleigh, North Carolina. And um, the deadline to apply for funding and submit an abstract is September 12th. So, if, you know, if anyone still wants some funding, um, you have six days to get, <laughs> to get it in. So we're still looking and um, we, we do our best to fund um, as many students as we can. Perfect. Thank you both. And yes, um, we do have the links that you were so gracious enough to send us, um, Antonio, ab Antonio, about the actual ways that you can raise money for funding to go to Sockness and really any conference. And so we will share both of those, um, all of that information with our viewers. And let me just take a quick plug to say on our Monday edition of our Vanguard STEM um, post, we will have a repository of conferences, um, not just information about Novache and SACNIS, which are two fantastic organizations, but also uh, for a number of other professional societies that focus in on identity as well. We, we'll have a, like a master list with a lot of resources um, that we'll be passing out to you um, because we want you to know that they exist. And if you know about these organizations, share the information with others because as we said when we, were, when we were talking earlier, sometimes you're the one or are, you know a couple or a handful and everyone may not know about these organizations on every campus right so if you have heard about softness make sure that someone knows um, someone else that you know knows about it as well and maybe that's a good segue to ask the question about 
chapters on campuses? Do both of your organizations have chapter campuses? Um, how does one find out about that and get more plugged in? So even if they can't, maybe if a student can't necessarily go to the conference this year, they can get plugged into your organizations, as you say, Antonio, because it's never too early um, to jump in. So um, for, for Novache, we have um, a, a number of student uh, chapters, and if you go to our website, and I'll you know send the links over, um, novache.org, and I think maybe slash student, something like that, there's some links to um, how you can sign up to start a student chapter. Um, student chapters are really the lifeblood of the organization, uh, because that's where um, people we really have a heart and a passion to grow our students um, and to you know move move them forward, and that's where that's where you grow to start the pipeline. Uh, so um, for students who are interested, you know, feel free to go to our website. Um, you'll get assigned um, somebody from the region to help you get the, the chapter established. And um, because we're small, I get copied on all the chapter applications. <laughs> so um, if you want to hear from the president regarding your chapter, that's kind of how it goes. Um, so um, we're, we're always looking for more student chapters and looking to you know pair professional chapters with those um, student chapters for mentorship and to you know get them to the conference. So that. We're, we're always looking for more student chapters. It's very similar for SOCMAS. Uh, we currently have about 115 chapters nationally um, throughout the states. Um, and what we, we encourage students that are interested in learning more about chapters is going to our website. And they're listed from A through Z. It's probably the easiest way. Um, and if there is a chapter, we encourage students to connect with them and to become a part of that community. The chapter is um, does not only help us to create critical mass, you know, uh, to be able to change the face of science, but we also know that that's a community, a learning community for the students, and that allows them to be successful and make sure that they're doing well in their academic studies and gaining the research that they need getting the mentoring and the support that they need as well. So we definitely encourage students, um, if there is no chapter in the area, we definitely encourage them, if they have a group of students interested, we will help them also to create a chapter in that particular community. And it's amazing how it's evolved. I mean, you, you talk about you know working with young people and have them growing up in the organization. We have developed two, uh, we have three professional chapters now. Um, at Procter and Gamble, at Gen and Tech, and um, with NIH, and that was because the young people had they were part of chapters as undergraduate grad students, and now they feel like they want that support mechanism and want to contribute to improving diversity in the organizations. Uh, so there's great opportunity for engagement at all levels with chapters. Absolutely, and that's a really good point. That you know. The whole idea is that there are many generations coming through, right? 1972 was a long time for many people to come through the, uh, I hate the word pipeline, to come through the process <laughs> to get to where they're going, whether it's academia or industry or government or entrepreneurship or wherever. And so this idea of being able to then continue to grow the way that we're connecting and to build um, professional contacts that lead to jobs. So not just training for, you know, how to give your presentation, but how to get a job, to hear job openings in, in different organizations and such. So, you know, that's another really important reason to not just get connected as a student. And I should say, I should clarify that when I say young person, I just mean someone young to the field. You can be of any age uh, when you're when you're going through this. I don't want to be ageist about that. Um, but when you're new to the field, it's good to be there, you grow your skills, you'll figure out how to present, you'll get good at presenting, you'll get some friends, you'll be able to have your, your as you said, to leave your cohort, that's your Novache year. Um, and then you will all go out and get jobs and you will then be able to recruit for uh, those jobs if they are places that you wanted to recruit for, right? So that's a really, really good point that it's not just student organizations, it's the whole shebang. It is getting to the place where you can now, you're in your you know cushy job in whatever, in, you know, initiative or endeavor and you can bring others along with you so it's still that reaching back pulling forward thing really important point really important point i just wanted to add uh my story um when i went to a no conference i kind of owe my career 
or at least the beginnings of it to uh, to Novache. I when I was a grad student, my funding was running out, and um, I said I need an internship to kind of bridge that summer gap. Um, and um, after the internship, I said, you know, I need a, I need a job. So um, you know, at, at one of my first Novache conferences, I went around and got the prep on my resume at the conference and went around at the career fair and um, got an internship at Merck and as a grad student. And um, that was the beginning of my career there. So I spent seven years at Merck. And, um, you know, throughout throughout the time, you know, I had the coaching from the different Novoshape members and um, the leadership experiences, which helped grow my career. And, you know, so the reason I'm so passionate about this organization is because I feel like I owe my cushy job. <laughs> um, well, it's cushy. It was a little rough getting started, but um, it's a bit cushy now. I'll take it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I owe, you know, that, that training and, and those experiences to what Nova Shape pulled together. I don't know that, you know, some other place would have given a, a struggling grad student a chance, you know. Uh, so I was a little older. To, to be getting internships, but, um, you know, Merck gave me a chance, and, you know, I thank Novoshape for bringing those, you know, bringing those two things together for me. Fair, fair point, and really well taken, absolutely. And I, I, I honestly feel like one of the things that organizations like yours and in this constellation of STEM plus identity conferences and professional societies do well is acknowledge that fact, right? that I am better than I was when I started. And so now I want to make it better for someone else. So this sort of refrain is, is really, um, I think it is the power of these organizations. So we've got a question coming in from Stephanie Page uh, at the Purple Page on Twitter. Hey, Stephanie. Uh, Dr. Page, apologies. Um, her question, she's a new doctor, y'all. So I have to celebrate that as often as possible. Um, her question is, are there opportunities for students to get membership scholarships? Um, yeah, membership scholarships, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take some creative liberty there and ask about student memberships um, first. So, could you tell us about that with your particular organization? So, for Sakanas, we try to keep the cost relatively low for students. Um, so, it's under twenty dollars, and you can get an annual membership for students. Oh, and we right now we don't have scholarships for that, but I think that it's manageable for our students at this point in time. So uh, similar, ours is just at $20. Um, it's been at $20 for almost 20 years. <laughs> um, so uh, we feel that it's pretty manageable. If for some reason um, you're having difficulty with joining at that level, give me a call and that won't be a problem. <laughs> but um, uh, for the most part, so our student memberships are $20 and our professional membership is $100. I just want to you know, let that stop you. <laughs> I just want to underline and underscore repeat several times that both organizations have student memberships that are twenty dollars or less. So as a student, you can join Sockness or Novache for twenty dollars or less. Just want to make sure that didn't get broken up or caught off in the in the broadcast. Please don't forget that uh, su support and and because when you do that, you get membership benefits. You get plugged into the loop. There are all kinds of things that happen when you do that. So if you can um, get that $20, it is $20 that is well worth spending. Um, and, and like Talitha said, if, if it becomes an obstacle, if that is an obstacle, you can talk to the organizations, you can talk to people around you. Um, many of, that's what mentors and sponsors and, and champions, those kinds of people in your life can help you do. So uh, don't let the price be a barrier, but for those of you for whom it's not a barrier, join today. <laughs> I should say I'm not being paid by either organization to say that. So let me just let me just not get myself into trouble with that. Awesome. Okay, let's see. Another question um, wanted to ask is about um, the activities that you have that might be of interest, particularly for women of color in STEM. So do you have a group for women at your already sort of um, identity focused conference? Is there a track that women of color can get on? And if so, could you tell us a little bit about it? I'll defer to 
uh, to Talitha to start. Okay, so um, we have a, a, a track that we started in 2010. So um, actually, uh, uh, me and two other Nova Shape members started this. Um, it's the Wonderful Burks Hawk Women's Symposium. Um, it's, a, it's a leadership award and it's a symposium. And um, it is in honor of the first female president of Nova Shay, um, Winifred First Hawk. And um, we actually kick off the conference with this um, symposium and luncheon. And it really is like our first, our first expo, our first opening to um, introduce uh, all of our members to the leadership that, um, that happens through, um, or the female leadership that happens at Nova Shay. Um, we have overcome a history that is not unlike the broader context um, in, in the United States where women were not always at the table or up front, but in the background doing a lot of work for which the broader didn't get a lot of credit for. Um, and, you know, since then we have, over the past maybe five, six years, really sought to celebrate when the contributions that women make and also celebrate and acknowledge the support that we've received from our men to um, be successful. So um, we start off with, with that track. We also um, uh, have Coach, and I think Coach comes to SACNAS as well. Coach goes to a lot of um, different um, conferences. Um, the Committee on Advancing Women Chemists, something like that, University of Oregon. If you Google it, <laughs> it'll come up. Um, really excellent organization. If you want to put a plug for organizations, that's an excellent professional development organization for women, particularly in STEM, and particularly in the, um, the chemistry fields. Um, so we partner with COACH to bring in professional development um, that's directed towards women. So those are our two signature events that um, are specifically directed to women of color. And every other year we do partner with the um, ACS um, Women Chemists of Color, um, and they um, will put on symposiums and um, uh, and programming at, at the conference. So for SACNAS, uh, we, it's pretty much woven in, in terms of the women, our women in STEM who are involved. Um, so we do have a pre-conference as well. I think Coach is a part of that pre-conference experience for our members. Um, and then throughout the conference, uh, a number of women do take the leadership and present sessions. Um, it's a whole host of topics from their science and the collaborative research, but also to talking about those really difficult issues about being a mom, you know, being a mother and a scientist or managing family and um, trying to achieve tenure. And so I think those really wonderful conversations happen throughout the conference. Last year, we rose to the plenary stage, a women in STEM panel. Um, and we had representatives from all STEM sectors to talk about their own experience and what were some of those challenges. Um, and we collected uh, questions from the audience to really have authentic, you know, meaningful conversations posed to the panelists and to hopefully get those authentic responses. It was one of our most well-received uh, plenary sessions. Um, additionally with that, we also have, um, we're now on Medium. Um, and it's the Science and Culture Chronicle for SACNAS. And in that space also, we invite a lot of our own SACNistas to share their stories. And a lot of them have to do from the women perspective and their experiences. Uh, so we create a lot of, again, it's always creating a lot of avenues for our members to be able to be that voice and to share what's going on in their lives as scientists. Perfect, thank you. Yes. and 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 having the multiple avenues is really important in both organizations, right? And really in, in, in general organizations so that uh, people can come with whatever their issue is, whether it could be family, but it could be, you know, work or it could be anything, right? But having that avenue is really important and having the acknowledging women in leadership, right? I, I love how both of you have talked about that, right? Like that, that you've uh, your organizations have been proactive um, and, and um, intentional about uh, showcasing women in leadership. Both of those things are important. Two more questions rolling in. One, we'll start with, I think we'll go with uh, 
East, at East Central B because you had a question, I think it was related to this. So the good thing about having a lot of different avenues is that there's a lot of stuff that you can get into, but the, the challenging thing about having so many avenues is that it can be overwhelming. So her question is, so the question, I shouldn't say her, the question is, um, conferences can be overwhelming. What are some things that one can do to minimize anxiety at conferences? That's a great question. Um, so for us, we have a video that we have our staff create um, that really give the students the tips, the tips and how to prepare for a conference. Uh, so hopefully that allows it to be a little bit more manageable and not as, um, it, it's, you know, it can be intimidating to go into a room of 4,000 people of color, right? So I think that's a great avenue. Uh, reading the resources that we have is really helpful as well. On scholarship, we actually have a full orientation session for them in the evening prior to the conference to help them navigate that experience. Um, and we give them the tips and we have a, a conference app that we help them navigate as well for this year that we'll do. Um, and Janita, if I may add to, I, I want to acknowledge um, sometimes our community college students are forgotten in this space. And we also have a community college day for students and we give them the same experience, right? An orientation, how to navigate it, how to create your ele elevator speech. Or approaching mentors and it can be intimidating talking to a, you know, a, a professional or a faculty member. They have worked on an elevator speech to be more comfortable. So um, you probably see me nodding my head because we have you know similar uh, approaches there. Uh, the way the conference is set up, the first two two days of the conference are really focused around student development. Um, so the the very first session of the conference um, it's early in the morning, but um, it it's called getting the most out of the Novache conference. And um, actually, I will attend. Um, the vice president will attend. Uh, we will sit down with the students. The conference chair comes, and I uh, uh, strong arm all the board members to attend if they can. Um, so we try to have everyone come in and, and show that we're relatable to actually have conversations. Um, we have resume reviews, which are usually the day before the career fair. Um, and prior to that, there are career sessions that we do via Google Hangouts. Um, we also have, um, I'm missing something. We do the resume review, the Google Hangouts, and there's something else that I cannot remember at the moment, but I will send it to you, Chidaida. Uh, so those are just some of the, the, the key ways that we try to minimize the, um, you know, the, the fear or the anxiety of, of, you know, getting there and being around so many people who, in your mind, you feel like they're so much further along than you. But we try to have those close conversations so that we can tell our stories and, you know, share people, you know, we've been where you are. Um, in many cases in our careers, we are where you are. You know, we're just as insecure for the next thing. So, um that, that's, that's really the, the crux of it, you know, coming together at that beginning and trying to set the tone of relatability. And then, you know, we're always, uh, well, at least I am, <laughs> available for social media and um, uh, we try to encourage the board members and other Novache leaders to be available um, and accessible that way. Absolutely, absolutely. Fantastic op options uh, for both of you. And I should also say just in terms of coming to space, because it is true that these organizations can definitely feel like home and often they do once you have met a couple of people that you can walk into a room and, and, and zone in on someone and say hey to that you recognize and that recognizes you. Um, but leading up to that, it can be hard. I think knowing though that the people there are invested in you generally, it makes it easier to reach out to people and not be so alone. Uh, so, you know, some other, another direction to, to address the anxiety is to listen to yourself and what your personal cues are. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, it is okay to leave a session and to go for a walk, to go sit outside or to sit in your room. It, it, it's, there are different methods for different people depending on what you need. Some people, when they get overwhelmed, they really want to be in a quiet space and so they'll go to their room. Some people need air, so they go outside. Uh, some people take 
an afternoon off, right? It's okay to listen to yourself in terms of what you need to keep your anxiety down. Um, but what you don't want to do is let your fear overwhelm your anxiety, right? So you don't want to not go to something because you're afraid because you never know what's there. But if you are feeling anxious and overwhelmed and you can't concentrate or, or, pull, or sort of be um, centered, then you may need time away. So listen to yourself. Try to be honest with yourself about whether you're just afraid or if you are actually having some anxiety towards it. And then do what you need to do to get yourself together. Um, one way to do that without um, guilt is to make sure you're looking through your conference program before you get there. And if you do that, then you can you know that, OK, so this is a session that I really want to be at. I have to make sure that I'm there. And so that might mean you need to take a few minutes break before that session. Or you may need to push that session and take a break after. But do listen to yourself, uh, but know that there are reset resources for you from the organizations themselves to help you. Had another question coming in from Nia X. She was asking about um, being a recent grad. She feels like she's slightly older than the average recent grad, and she wants to know how to plug in to get access to um, employment opportunities or mentoring uh, that would allow her to sort of still benefit from those things, even though she feels like she's slightly um, older than the rest of, of her sort of graduating colleagues. That, that's an excellent point. Um, it's, it's that in-between space, and it, it is very hard to navigate. Um, but I, I would say one of the resources that we do have at the conference um, and we're working to extend that beyond. We have a new program called uh, New Chems on the Block. Um, and it was started by two students who were approaching that space. Um, they were post, one was a postdoc headed, uh, or finishing up a postdoc, and another one was heading into full time employment. Um, and um, it's, it's uh, New Chems on the Block, and it, it's a program that provides resources for early career um, uh, student, well, not students, but early career um, professionals um, and resources where at the conference we have specific programming um, that will help to bridge that connection. And, you know, the career fair is, is for students and for early career professionals, so, you know, it spans the gamut. Um, and, I, and I would say that if, um, you know, Nia X is looking for, you know, career opportunities, um, one of the things that I would recommend is looking at who's presenting ahead of time um, and kind of identifying what some of those opportunities are and reaching out to those companies ahead of time saying, you know, I see that you'll be at the Novache or the Sapnas conference. Um, you know, I'm interested in these things. Can I set up a time to meet with you? The average person does not do that. And you're already putting yourself in a different category, showing some ambition. Um, and reach out to, um, you know, some of the, the member, the leadership from the Sacknes or from Novache and say, hey, you know, do you know anybody here who you can, you know, connect me with? Um, and one of us will, you know, reach out to our networks and see what we can do. Um, so because you're older, there you have a bit more maturity where you can actually ask for what you want. You know, you can assert yourself a bit more and say, here's what I am, here's what I'm doing. That's kind of what I did as a grad student. I was in an in-between space. And um, it allowed me to kind of get the, the opportunity I was looking for. But I, was, I definitely encourage you to see who's coming first and reach out to them ahead of time so they can kind of get to know you, see if you can schedule a pre-call or a pre-meeting at the conference. And it gives you an edge that the average person is not doing. Absolutely. That is definitely something that I encourage my mentees to do uh, is to know who's presenting at which panels and know which ones you want to talk to and actually ask them to, to chat during the coffee breaks, right? Um, to, to make sure you're getting in conversation with people. And the other thing, because I'm seeing, I'm seeing the extra questions about um, getting mentorship and maybe having a little bit of a hard time doing that. And I will say uh, to, to underscore Talitha's point is that often you have to give people a um, sense of what you need in a size that they can understand, right? So when you're first meeting someone, they may not be able to meet with you for you know, an hour or two hours or three hours to begin with, uh, but they can answer specific questions. So the more specific and the more targeted 
you can um, be, the better someone else is able to respond to you. And it looks like you're a chemist, so I definitely encourage you to be a part of um, Nobuche and Abercams, for that matter, uh, that, that do the chemistry thing, and even Sockness, for that matter, because they have chemists there too. Um, but join these organizations, be a part of their conferences, participate in their groups, because you will find people that can help you. And you're not just looking for just one mentor, right? You're looking for a group of people who can mentor you in a, part, in a bunch of different ways. So figure out the thing that you're looking for, find a person that can help you with that particular thing, and you may need another person to help you with another, um, another aspect of that. Antonia, I saw you might have had something to add there. Yeah, I just wanted to, I mean, I echo with what my colleagues have shared already, but what I wanted to say is, um, especially maybe for some of us who may be introverts, is to uh, really encourage you to uh, extend yourself and say hello to the person sitting next to you. You'll be surprised at how friendly and supportive that person will be, and they may be just like you. And so together, you've already formed a group that you can talk to other people. Um, additionally, I think it's always really important that it doesn't really matter who you talk to, because once they find out what your discipline is and what additional support you, um, you may need, to their other colleague that, and they'll say you know what I want you to meet this person and they'll make that connection for you so you'll just be surprised at how supportive everyone really wants to be um, when you show up absolutely I love that idea about just reaching out to the person next to you it's a fantastic idea because there, there will generally be someone sitting next to you <laughs> that's a great idea um, sometimes I, I have I use the phrase I'm an introvert who moonlights as an extrovert um, I know what it means. I understand the anxiety um, around coming into crowds, around talking to people. Uh, I work on it, so most, most of the time you won't know. But one of the things that I use um, to kind of overcome that, if I'm entering a situation where I know that I'll pretty much have a, a spiel, you know, or a shtick or something to, um, to kind of share, and I'll be saying it over and over, or I need to communicate a need, you know, I'm a grad student looking for an internship opportunity that will potentially lead to full-time employment. Um, I actually write out what I want to say, um, get my words, and I'll actually speak it, um, say it to myself in the mirror, try to look at how I say, you know, and, and if you haven't already heard, I have a bit of a lisp, so sometimes I get tongue-tied. Um, and so I, I practice and I work on that, and it gets me more comfortable with, with myself and what I'm trying to to say, so that is one of the, the tools that I use being an introvert who is in a extroverted um, role. Um, and I also recommend, there's a book out there called Quiet. Um, I can't remember who it's by, but um, I just uh, finished reading it. And um, it's a very good book to just kind of center you and help you feel comfortable with being who you are. Um, so take it from one introvert to another, for all of you all who are out there. Um, it is possible <laughs> to exist in that world. Absolutely. Great point. Uh, two more things to round us out. I can't believe our time is already up. Where did it go? We were having so much fun. Still are. Um, two questions. One, actually, is a point. I wanted to underscore something uh, Stephanie Page just mentioned, uh, going back to the membership fees. $20 may, may be a lot for you. And if it is, then um, something I said earlier, I just want to underscore, reach out to your community, to your mentors, to your, um, your sponsors on your campus, because often they can help you either personally or often you can write your membership fees into different, uh, different levels of your um, professional work, right? So it may not need to come out of your own pocket. It may be something that can be reimbursed through potentially how, whatever grant you're on or whatever. So if, if the $20 does represent a barrier to you, then be creative about finding ways to get it. So I just wanted to underscore that. Thank you, Stephanie, for pointing that out. Um, the other question came in from BeWise. She's saying that we've, we're having lots of questions, true, about students in early career. Um, do either of your organizations have um, programs for mid to senior level women with maybe 15 to 20 years of experience? because um, she's not seeing very much support for this demographic. I'll go ahead and chime in. Um, we have a, uh, a leadership institute. It's called the Linton Pudri Saknas Leadership Institute that we have every year. And we identify, you know, um, 
postdocs, early career, mid career professionals um, to receive some of the training and the support that they need to continue on with their work. And then uh, we've also, uh, I think we're in our second year of the Advanced Leadership Institute. So taking more senior folks and giving them those tools and experiences that they need in order to be successful in their careers. Additionally, those folks that participate in those programs then become a part of a community, if you will, online community. And you'll be, uh, you'll be so amazed at like really wonderful people that are interacting and supporting one another every day from, you know, I have an interview, how should I dress to, I have a really difficult issue to deal with and I need some articles about microaggressions. Are there any that you really would focus on? And so this learn this community becomes its own learning community and very supportive. So that's the way that we help those individuals that are in that particular um, time of their career. So um, that's a great question from, uh, from BYs. For Novache, um, it's actually an area of opportunity for us. Um, it's something that um, I've outlined in, in the strategic plan for Novache for us to launch, and it's within our plan to launch a, a leadership institute as well um, within the fiscal 2016-2017 um, year. And um, one of the programs that we are using as a model is the Sackness uh, Leadership Institute. We think that they do it very well. Um, and um, we're also looking at the American Chemical Society and others, um, the Executive Leadership Council, looking for different models. So it's, some, it's an area of growth for us. And, um, you know, we welcome if, if people are passionate about it. Because as I start to approach that, uh, that time frame where I'm no longer, I like to consider myself early in my career, but uh, uh, a younger person gave me the side eye when I said I was young. So, um, but as as you start, you know, shifting up, you know, I, I wonder, you know, where where are we? You know, where is that support? And so I'm, um, be wise. I can connect with you in that I'm filling the gap, um, which is why um, it's part of our platform and a part of where we're trying to go. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, goodness, so many questions. So many questions. It's Fantastic. Um, one of the questions that came in, and I'm just going to take the liberty to answer it, and then I want to want to ask you both about sister organizations. The question is about whether or not it's ever appropriate to walk up to a presenter and say, "I wanted to meet you because you're a STEM woman, woman of color." And I'm just going to go ahead and say, it's fine. <laughs> like it is fine. It is uh, something that often because we're in such low, low numbers, we do seek each other out, and it is a breath of fresh air when we find each other. And so, you know, every person is different, but I can say almost with a certainty that pretty much everybody is going to be okay and probably going to be happy to see you too. Okay, I, I so, thought. yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> that is not a problem. I, I highly doubt it's a problem. So many, many great questions. Um, thank you for those of you who are on Twitter in particular, engaging with the questions and comments to make sure that everybody's getting some words and comments. We really appreciate that for everyone who's live tweeting. Um, before we go, since we're basically at the end of our hour, sad flavor, um, I wanted to take this opportunity to think through some of the other, organi other organizations that are um, similar in mission and spirit to your two organizations. So um, I'll ask you first if there are ones that come top of mind. I have a few listed here. And for those of you who are watching, we will list a bunch of them. We can't say it's exhaustive because there are probably more than we, we even know, but if you know about some, Send them our way. We will. We are compiling lists. We've been doing it for a couple of weeks now. Um, we're going to get some some feedback from Antonia and Talitha, but we are going to compile a, a huge list of um, organizations like this. So let me start with the two of you. Do you have any sister organizations that you want to highlight? So I would actually direct people. There's a link. Changescoalition.org. It's a long name, um, and I know that. Um, uh, there, there are two, I think, SACNAS representatives on that board. And Changes Coalition um, lists a number of minority technical organizations. Um, it's, you know, the Association of Blacks in Energy, the Black Data Processing Association, Latinos in Science, um, they're now MAYAS, um, NSBE, NACME, um, NOAA, a national organization of uh, minority, I'm sorry, NOMA, National Organization of Minority Architects. And that is the extent of my memory at the moment. <laughs> but I think there are about 15, about 15 of us. And that 
it's a good place to uh, find a, a good list of other organizations, and they all have wonderful conferences, wonderful people who are supporting. Um, and uh, SACNAS is actually a founding member of the Change, Changes uh, Coalition, um, uh, SACNAS Novoshade, and, and a couple others. So I would definitely recommend, um, you know, starting there. I, I would add, um, we also participate, uh, we're a part of an NSF engineering assist program with six other uh, societies that are looking to increase the number of students uh, pursuing um, engineering faculty positions. And so I will give you the acronyms, but happily give you the details afterwards. Um, SHIP is a part of it, um, ACES is a part of it, SWE is a part of it, um, I think NASB is also a part of it, and AMAYAS is a part of it as well. I'm forgetting someone, but um, I think this is a really diverse group, and so I would also encourage students that if you don't see anyone on your list, I would Google your discipline, uh, add diversity to it to see who else may be represented in your particular discipline. Or call us and we'll be happy to help you figure that out as well. Absolutely, absolutely, fantastic. Those are awesome resources. Um, I also had listed ACES, um, uh, National, that's the American Indian Science and Engineering Society, the National Society of Black Physicists, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, you mentioned that as well, a Richard Tapia Celebration of Diversity in Computing, the Grace Hopper Conference, uh, we mentioned National Society of Black Engineers, Abercam, the annual biomedical research conference for minorities and minority students. There are many. We're going to hook you up with a list. Uh, you've gotten some more. Please share who you know. We want to make sure that everyone knows about these organizations and knows that, that there is a, another place for them to go to feel camaraderie, support, um, and connection. So we are officially at the end of our show, which I'm really sad about because I feel like y'all were just getting started. We're just warming it up. <laughs> So thank you both for being on the show. It's been lovely and information packed. Um, I took notes. I know our viewers took notes. I'm sorry, I should say they, they captured notes in their note taking apparatus. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you both for being on this show. Thank you so much, Janata. No problem. Tell me it was great. Pleasure. Yes, nice it's my pleasure. You. So before we close out, let me just say a few more things to those of you watching. Um, as you know, we've had incredible guests um, and panelists. These, these, the, having leadership from these two very important and very uh, robust, cutting edge organizations is an honor and a pleasure for us here at Vanguard STEM. So thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for those who watched and asked questions. Y'all had fantastic questions. We didn't even get to get to all of them, but we will continue the conversation both on social media. Like I said, we'll be having a resource guide coming out on Monday that will be with information um, such as the Google Hangouts from both organizations, resource list for how to get funding, um, all kinds of stuff. We're just gonna put together a guide and the rest of September at Vanguard STEM is Conferences 101. So we'll be hearing from people who have gone to conferences, people who have tips for conferences. We're just doing a whole month for conferences. So, it's, so by the time the conferences show up, you are ready to go. So um, if you want to contribute to that content, you have something you want to write or you have um, a piece of advice or a story you want to tell, hit us up at hello at vanguardstem.com. Um, we will talk with you about how you can potentially have a contribution on the site for others to read. The other thing that we do, and I have two brand new nominations, um, is our Woman Crush Wednesday in STEM. We do it every Wednesday. Uh, we highlight a different woman of color in STEM who is doing it to death uh, or doing it to life, as it were. Um, and so if you're interested in either being nominated, or, like nominating yourself or nominating someone else, please do mention us um, on Twitter. Uh, listed on Facebook or email us at social at vanguardstem.com. We're always, always looking for um, people to highlight and we are super excited to highlight women of color in STEM who often feel like um, we're at the margins. We want to bring all of us into the center and into the spotlight. So if you have people, uh, phenomenal women that you want to nominate, please send them our way. Uh, thank you very much to the Vanguard STEM team. We are small but mighty. Uh, to our operations manager, Lana Hunter. To our editor-in-chief of VanguardSTEM.com, Natasha Berryman. To our Woman Crush Wednesday and STEM coordinator, uh, Christelle Villefranc, um, and my baby self. So thank you to the team. Y'all are boss. 
really appreciate you. Um, also, thank you to Josette Johnson for helping us get the videos edited, to Sockness, to Nobache uh, for your wonderful support and to your um, conferences for setting this up. Thank you for watching, tweeting, asking questions, comments, giving suggestions. Y'all are the best. So big. I'm your host, Dr. Zaida Eisler. This has been another episode of Vanguard Conversations with Women of Color and STEM. Have a wonderful night. Talk to you soon.